significant that gets published uh, which guides us in a way towards a disenvolvement of power. So, 6th century effort, I mean, the effort to read 6th century, the inscription ends with Henry T. Goldbrook. After 30 years comes the hero, okay? James Prince. So, James Prince comes to India, like that, in those days, if you want to make money, you have to come to India to work for East India Company. It's like how we go to US, Europe, and Australia these days. You work for East India Company, make a killing, go back. You become the Raja in uh, England. You could build castles. Okay. So, James Prince. How do you work for these people, right? How? They have done the Nabobs. Nabobs. That's how they were called in uh, uh, England. <laughs> Robert Clive's position is like uh, one of his mind. Okay. He was able to buy a pocket. <laughs> Uh, the money he, he became a member of parliament. He see bright people. Okay, actually, I think he, he bought up some land somewhere in Ireland or something. Yes, yes. What did he, he renamed it after? I think. Uh, there's there's a name to it. The palace, the fort has a uh, very Indian name to it. Yeah. Dalrymple talks about it. I forgot. Uh, there's a name to it. But this guy is like super corrupt. People are, people in England are pissed off with this East India Company employees because they go to, they go to India as nobodies. Come back as like rich asses. We named it classy. So we could call it classy. Okay, okay. Let's do it. <laughs> so, uh, so I mean, he earns a seat in parliament. He is impeached by the British parliament. Okay, and then again he, he makes another effort to again become a uh, So, anyways, so James Prince comes to India to work in the Calcutta Mint. Eventually, he also goes to Varanasi to work in the mint there. So, he comes to print the East India coins. In Canada, with the trade is flourishing, we need to mint coins in India. So, but I think like, like most of the other antiquarians, he is not a trade historian. But he's interested in knowing of his country. Uh, eventually, he becomes the head of the Asiatic Society. Uh, he converts the Asiatic researchers to into the journal of the Asiatic Society of Bengal. Uh, in 1834, so after 1801, 1834. Is when the first ground is broken to the disappointment of Brown. In the volume 3, so the journal had a monthly volume, sorry, a monthly edition. So, and all the 1834 monthly magazines are combined under one volume. So, it's the third volume, and from the March uh, publication, uh, is an important paper. Like, among all these important characteristics, lots of them are found in this world, one single paper. So, how did this happen? There is a person called T.S. Bird. He makes a copy of the Allahabad inscription. So, Allahabad in pillar inscription, like most of the other Ashokan pillar inscriptions, was actually erected at Kaushambi, again in Uttar Pradesh, but it was moved to Allahabad. God knows who moved it. Probably the Guptas. Probably the Guptas. Could be. Uh, no, but it's still doubtful because I tell you why it may not be Guptas. Uh, so this pillar is moved from near to Allahabad. So it's got the same characters of Feral Shama. By the way, by this time, there was no name of Brahmi. These people are calling this scripture stick figures or lath inscription, lath, lath characters. Lath meaning pillar. So this guy makes a copy of this and sends it to Prince. Uh, and then he says, look, I found this uh, inscription. And uh, it seems very similar to the Feral Shah lath pillar inscription. Uh, I don't know if you guys make sense of this. Okay? I have to talk a bit about the Allahabad pillar inscription. Uh, because I love talking about it. So, <laughs> Allahabad pillar inscription has got three inscriptions. There is the inscription number one, uh, which is Ashoka's edict. Number two is by Samudra Gupta. And the other one by Jahangir. It's fascinating, the same pillar gets used for 2,000 years to write their edicts or something that Gupta, Gupta's inscription is written by his uh, minister, Ali, Arisena. Arisena. It's a precious thing, it's just like talking about the greatness or something. Uh, and Jangir likes it. Apparently, these three rulers are the ones, of course, Arun Gazeb. Uh, extends the empire further, but these are the three people who could actually rule large parts of India. 
But the same pillar is used by all these three people spread across a time frame of 2000 years to still write their achievements. It's a fascinating pillar. Okay? Uh, so there are these three inscriptions. What sense is coming with the journal uh, to Pinsel? This one they could read it easily. It's the Persian script. Uh, they read it. Samudraputta's inscription was read. It was, it was written in great Brahmi. Okay, so around this period. So it, it was read not properly. There are lots of mistakes in it. But one thing they did was they were able to read the word Samudraputta. They were also able to read Chandragupta. That created a confusion because there is Chandragupta Maurya of the Maurya period. Then there is Chandragupta of the Gupta period. Okay. I talk about the confusion later. Because, mind you, by then Ashoka was not known to, to anybody. Ashoka was a forgotten king. They are looking at these inscriptions, they don't know what's written on it. You will eventually know that even though they are able to read, they will still not know that it was Ashoka. I tell you the story of that. So they were written, they don't know Ashoka, they know Chandrakuta Maurya because Greek historians were writing about Chandrakuta Maurya. They called them uh, Sandrakotos. Right, so because Sarah's Nikita's daughter was married to Chandrakuta. Right? So they knew Chandrakuta, but they don't know Ashoka. They were able to read Samdhagupta. And Samdhagupta is the fourth in the lineage from Chandrakuta, the father of Gupta Bhai. Four. Chandrakuta is his father. His father? There's Gadukta and Gupta before him, and Sri Gupta is the very first father. Okay, so okay, I, I, I'm mistaken here. So he's the immediate son of, of Chandrakuta. Of Chandrakuta. So, these people are surprised. They think Samadhanta was the son of Chandranta Maurya. Okay, that's what happens. But anyways, so they are able to read second in, uh, number two, second inscription of the Alhaba pillar, partial. Uh, the translation is really fucked up, but the translation is not good. But they are able to partially read this. In this one they had no So Princep took a copy of this. He took a copy of the Tanusha inscription, a copy of that was made by Henry T. Kulbrook, the first one to make a fascinating one us, and he puts his effort there. He uncovers lots and lots of important keys through these two inscriptions. So what he does is, can you go to the next slide and talk about what he did? He ends up repairing his chart. He is looking at the characters and he's looking at the variations they take. Okay? He finds this character. It is also appearing in these forms. Okay? Similarly, for every character in the alphabet, he found all these variations. This is the Abhuddha type. He guessed it. He did not know that Brahmi was an Abhuddha type. But he knew every modern Indian script was of Abhuddha type. So what he basically did, he assumed that it would be a type. By the way, the term Abhuveda would not have been known to Prince because he doesn't make a mention of that. He calls them over di diacritics, is what they call it. So what he is doing here is a consonant with its variant when it's come with the over. Okay? So by the and he is also pretty good at guessing that the uh, guessing the over that is linked to it. He says A, A, E, O, U, and uh, this is the uh, Aha, Amaha. How do you guess? He no, he's, he's not sure about it, but he, as you see, he put a question mark around it. So, how he guessed this is from Samadhanutta's description. Because the whole diacritics, I mean, the, when you take, when you merge that with A, you have to put it. Aspect. You have to put a dash on top of it. It remained the same in, in this period. So he guessed it would be the same here also. Okay, so that's how he guessed all of this. By the way, he got all of them correct except this one. This is not O, this is I. The longer I. Okay? But he actually guessed it correct. But he, he was not sure. That is a different thing. But he actually guessed it. So he identified that this was an Avogadra type. Were there any punctuation marks as well? No. No punctuation. 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 No punct
very hard. You are absolutely right. As you can see in the inscription, I gave you copies of this. You can't even chop these into words. Right? But the Latin didn't have punctuation marks until the Augustan period. Augustus is one who introduces dots between words. Until that point, you are right. familiar with the Yeah, but it's still Augustus was like a what, around the turn of the century. Yeah, around the turn of the century. But uh, this was before that. So I, I would assume that even they wouldn't have a sense of punctuation. Uh, so he, he, he identifies the Abhuvada nature of this. He also identifies something. He identifies that there were seven characters in this inscription that did not take the uh, that did not take these forms. You will see here this one. This had these two variations, but he did not find a variation of this. So he guessed that there would be vowels. Vowels cannot take this form, right? It's only consonants when they merge with vowels and create this. So he also guessed there were vowels. Right? In, this, in the very one same paper, which probably runs into four pages, I mean, when I was reading it, I had goosebumps. How was this guy guessing all of this? Anyway, in retrospect, it might seem very simple for us, but it's amazing how he did this. Left to right, I couldn't see uh, any evidence how he assumed it is, how he figured out that the skip means to left, right, left to right. By this being clear, he did not know that. And in fact, in the subsequent papers also, he did never know that it is written from left to right. It's just that he discovers the key and he reads it, it makes sense. So, it happens like this. It was a syllabic, again he is still doubtful about this. Uh, he assumes it's syllabic. He also has identifies conjunct, conjunct, the constants in this. You will see this one character here, which is a combination of several letter, several consonants. It's, it's a completely complex character. I, I leave it there. So he does identify conjunct consonants in this very same way. Can you go back to this slide? Yeah, this, no, no, this one. So, what are the observations of the He identifies that the script is abbreviated time. He identifies words. He says that some of them are not subject to inflections. So, they must be words. He uses statistical methods. It's another important thing like statistical methods to decipher a script is much later. That's when this comes. So, what he does is he takes a Sanskrit Kavya, Bhakti Kavya, later period. He writes down uh, how many times a character repeats. So if you take you, if you pick like any random passage in English and write down how many times a Roman character repeats, you will see all take a precedent. You will see those characters come often. So he takes Bhatti Kavya, he does a statistical analysis of how many times a letter will come. He compares that with the Ashoka inscriptions and he's guessing what is that consonant. So he is making those efforts. Obviously, he doesn't identify any consonants by the way. He is using those efforts in this very simple way. There was a belief that Brahmi was a descendant from Greek because these people are already by then critical. Uh, they, they were thinking that civilization came to India through the invasion of Greeks. So they want to justify this character also came from Greek. And here and there, they found some characters. Can you go to the next slide? So this one would look like Sigma. Just like epsilon. So they thought this script was evolved from Greek. So Prince, can you go back again? So he dismisses that claim that it is a Greek, it is descended from Greek. He said it's just an accident that you come across this. These are inflections of the consonants. He dismisses that claim. He comes to a really important like this is the for me, this is the beauty of this entire paper. He wonders if this uh, the inscription has written is this even in Sanskrit? And nobody would get, guess this. Like anything of ancient period, you would say this would be of Sanskrit. The way he's guessing this is Sanskrit would have a lot of conjunct consonants. Like swaha, it's like any any Sanskrit thing you read, almost every word would be a combination of two consonants. Consonants or conjunct consonants. Conjunct consonants. Just like consonants. No, consonants also. So you would see two consonants merged together. So in this inscription, he found very few conjunct consonants. So he's wondering whether this is even Sanskrit. 
it's easy for people to assume that this will be Sanskrit. But it actually is right, very right. It's Prakrit. And Prakrit actually lacks its content concepts. Uh, she's made this very important observation here. And another important observation. He looks at these two pillars. He sees that the first uh, six, seven characters are the same in both the exceptions. It's actually, as you will know, it's the words Devanupi of Yadasi, which is the beloved of the gods, uh, Ashoka. So, in both, every Ashoka inscription generally starts with these words. He looks at these two inscriptions and says, they started with the same thing, but he thinks this is something like the Shri, which they use in uh, most of the Sanskrit texts. You start something with a with a holy invocation. So he assumes this is some sort of some, some sort of Sri or something. And then he's, he falls into the trap that Samudarutta was a son of uh, Chandrutta Moriya. Okay, which he read. So lots of important breakthroughs in this one paper itself. So this happens after 30 years of gap. Okay? Henry Colebrook publishes the Federation of Inscription. After 30 years, this groundbreaking paper comes from. Uh, so is the capstone still there on the pillar? 